time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, the uh, actor-producer who is about to appear in Metro's new picture, Tip on a Dead Jockey, my own personal live wire, Martin Gable. And on my left, a woman whose famous Broadway column is widely read from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, our favorite publisher and our panelist, Bennett Cerf. Our panel moderator, what's my line's answer to Charles Van Doren? Mr. John Charles <laughs> Daly. And I rush to say that I don't want to be called the answer to Mr. Van Doren. Somebody might put me in the same isolation booth or the next one to him. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for coming and uh, viewing with us what's my line tonight. We have some grand plans for the panel. We also have spring in mind, as you will find. We've turned our hand to the beautiful tonight, and there's much to be lauded about our choice in contestants tonight, even if the panel should be a little bit more successful than usual. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Now let's meet our first contestant. It'll be a joy, I promise you. Will you come in and sign in, please? Yes. Consultations tonight. <laughs> June. Mm -hmm. Finlayson, is that right? Uh, I think that all of you would like to know, and it won't surprise you a bit either, that Miss Finlayson is Miss Australia. This tells you. <laughs> And this panel tells you where Miss Finlayson comes from, so why should you have any more interest? Come with me, Miss Finlayson, please. And will you sit right down here? Now, I wonder, coming from Australia, if you're familiar with the way we keep score, are you? Yes, I think so. All right, fine. In that event, then let's let uh, our friends here in the theater, the folks at home, and everybody but the panel know exactly what your real line is, huh? Miss Finlayson is salaried. And let's begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Finlayson, welcome to the United States. Thank you. Uh, are you something other than a school teacher? Yes. <laughs> I ask that because last week we had a lady who looked as though she might be a Miss something or other, too, and that's what she turned out to be. And I was uh, in the third grade all week last week. <laughs> <laughs> Do you work for a profit making organization? Yes. Do you work indoors? Yes, I do. Do you uh, have any contact with people? Yes, I do. I come into contact with people all the time. Both men and women? Yes. Would you say you dealt in services? No. Uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> have to have a conference. Excuse me. Means how the language varies from country to country. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, Miss Finlayson will agree that she does deal in a service, and I would, if I might, with your permission, amend one of the earlier answers. Miss Finlayson does indeed work indoors, but it is not untoward that she might perform her service outdoors to some degree, too. Uh, do you move about a good deal in your work? Not very much. I do travel, but nothing much. 
since there is movement, and certainly it is, uh, <laughs> it is not within uh, the realm of possibility there'd be none, Dorothy, you continue. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't mean, did she wiggle? I just meant... Oh! She... <laughs> Heaven for pen! Uh, I just mean you're not stuck in some little office all the time. Not all the time. Uh, do you wear uh, ordinary daytime clothes when you work? Yes. But no special costume no. is required. Uh, are people better off because of what you do? I think so. Are they happier? Well, <laughs> <laughs> please, please. I think we're to be fair. We must say sometimes. Yes. You mean sometimes they could come in contact with Miss Finlayson and be worse off? Well, let's say not any happier for having had the contact. Uh, is money exchanged in what you do? No. No, I don't think so. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Finlayson, unfortunately, I can't have a conference with you the way John was managing. <laughs> but uh, I would like to ask if there is food or drink connected in any way with the work that you do. No, there is not. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Uh, Miss Finlayson, do you have to have some special kind of training for your job? Yes, I do. Uh, does it uh, take very long to learn to do what you do? A number of years, yes. Well, all right, we're going to have a little trouble if we keep this up. I can see it coming. Actually, I didn't say there formal is... education. No, I, you, no you form... didn't mean formal? No, I just no. meant that she had to be trained for her work, really. That's really what I meant, John. Well, one has to be trained to cut out paper dolls almost, you know. Yeah. One does in America, but not in Australia. No. <laughs> well, as long as you don't misunderstand the term of reference, Arlene, there is certainly training is necessary yes. before she can function with full efficiency. Uh, do animals uh, have any part in your work? No. No kangaroos? No. Three down, <laughs> three down, <laughs> seven to go, Mr. Gable. Uh, it's unthinkable that the Commonwealth of Australia could employ you in a way that didn't make some use of your great beauty. Are your looks an asset to you? No. That's Thank more you. down at six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they must be an asset to you, if not to your profession. Perhaps personally a little. Uh, well, would you say that anyone on this panel with a little training could do what you do? I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you, by any chance, do any writing? Yes. Are you connected with a newspaper? Yes. Well, are you either a reporter or a columnist? That's it. Miss <laughs> Finlayson is a police reporter, a reporter on the Sydney Sun, I believe. Sydney and Sun I'll bet her paper. looks help a lot. Well, I have never thought of taking up a career in crime before, but from here on in, I'm going to give it some serious consideration. Miss Finlayson, I must say that um, in the kind of evocation that you have, that of being Miss Australia, you do your country much honor. I'm sure you do the craft which Miss Dorothy and I serve equal honor as a police reporter. It's nice to know there are people like you in our business. Thank you very much, John. He's asking you to be out there. Thank you. Well, that didn't fool you very much, panel. Let's see if we can't fool you with a second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Arch? Arch Poole, is that right? <laughs> Mr. Poole, where are you from? Rocky River, Ohio. That's a suburb of Cleveland. Rocky River, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland. Fine. The panel, Mr. Poole. And over here, Mr. Poole, if you will. Are you familiar with our scoring system? Yes, sir. All right, then let's let everybody concerned except the panel know exactly what your line is. Mr. Poole is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Martin Gable. Mr. Poole, is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. Uh, is it a product that's in widespread use? Yes, sir. <laughs> Curious laugh. Is this product, uh, would it be called or considered a necessity rather than a luxury? Definitely. Is it used in the home? Yes. 
Is it something uh, used to, say, beautify the home? No. No, I don't think so, Martin. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it solid rather than liquid? Solid. <laughs> Could you sit on it? Yes, definitely. Well, if you did, would there be something funny about that? I beg your pardon, Nursie? If you sat on it, would there be anything unusual or funny? Everybody's laughing. No, no. Nothing unusual or funny about sitting on it. Two down and eight to go, mm. Mr. Sev. Mr. Poole, uh, does this product serve some utilitarian purpose? Yes. It does. Uh, would it be used, you said it is not used to beautify the home. Might it be used to cleanse the home in any way? No. 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 And three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is the product applied to anything that is live? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is what is live something other than a human being? <laughs> no. no. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Well, is it essentially a cleansing agent of some kind? No. no. That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, would it be in any sense warm? Yes. Would it be worn by a human being? Definitely. Could anyone on this panel ever wear such a thing? No. Good. <laughs> Would you consider it likely? Now, your original question, as I heard it, was could any could member of this panel this ever wear one of these thing? things? Yes. The answer would be yes. <laughs> well, if somebody, we're, go we're going to bet you $1,000 that one of us had ever worn such a thing, would you say yes or no? Well, now, we can answer that yes, meaning we would say yes or no, and then you still have to ask it in another way. <laughs> oh, all right, I'd love to. Go ahead. All right, how would you answer that? Yes. If somebody walked up to you, all mm -hmm. right. Has, to your knowledge, has anyone on this program ever worn such a thing? Wait a minute. <laughs> what degree of assumption is permitted in the answer to this question? Um, give him a wide I'll, give him a, I'll give him extremely wide latitude, a guess. His best guess. His best guess. Yes. On, yes. A, on a best guess basis, yes. All right. Would this be worn indoors? Could be, Could yes. it also be worn out of doors? Yes, ma'am. If it were worn, would it show? Yes, ma'am. No. It could, or could. maybe not. You'd know, wouldn't you? I would, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Poole, uh, if it was someone on this panel who had worn such a thing, would it be one of the female members rather than one of the male members? Mm, you mean in preference to or excluding the male members? Not excluding, but if he had, would he say that one of the female members had worn such a thing? It would certainly exclude a couple of things I've been thinking of. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, we'd say. All right. Uh, we just got rid of maternity clothes, John. Uh, would Bennett be able to wear this? <laughs> <laughs> you mean now? At any time. Yeah, if you say at any time, yes. Well, would he have worn it when he was younger? Yeah, sure. sure. Would we all have worn it when we were younger, the ladies too? Yeah. Could have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ho, ho. Is it worn below the waist? <laughs> yes. Well, come on now. Uh, I passed a bit and I won't say it. I would think, uh, knowing how Dorothy's mind works, that uh, she is uh, leading up somewhere or other to the, to the diaper business. 
is uh, would that be anywhere near uh, what you work in? Close, <coughs> yes. Uh, in other words, this is something that protects the wee ones <laughs> from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we have isolated the product. I do, <coughs> I do think a decent respect for men's opinions now requires that we isolate Mr. Poole's assignment with respect to them. What does Mr. Poole have to do with them? Uh, does he run some kind of a service? Yes, he does. <laughs> Mr. Poole manages the West End diaper service in Cleveland. <laughs> wow. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. We come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I've asked my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, John. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> of our mystery guest, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with Miss Arlene Francis. Would your name be seen on the theatrical pages of a newspaper? Huh? Well, uh, yeah, sometimes, if I, uh, if I don't watch myself sometimes. <laughs> Gable? Uh, are you more calculated to appeal to younger people than to uh, older people? Well, by golly, you struck a nerve there because uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, I try to appeal to, to, the, to the whole shooting match, you know. And not to mislead the panel, I would say that while we would admit that our guest has a very substantial, in fact, signal appeal to the younger people, he has also earned a reputation with uh, older people. Well, the way I think of it, if... Uh, the younger people have to get the money from the mother and father to go to the movies, you know, and, uh, and uh, so I, I, you got to play it all around, you know. <laughs> yes, Mama. Miss Kilgallen? Do you have anything to do with rock and roll? I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Do you have anything to do with rock and roll? Do you mean as... Uh, as a listener or... No, as a performer, if you don't No, mind. indeed, no. No, Thank that's you. a no. One so down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, if it's not rock and roll, uh, those blood-curdling shrieks that greeted your appearance on the stage must mean that you're a big movie star, are you? Yes, I'll answer that. He is indeed. Miss Francis? My, you're a gas. Are you a Western star? I beg your pardon? I say, <laughs> have you appeared in Westerns? <laughs> that lady I've, been in, back. I've been in more westerns than there are horses in westerns. <laughs> <laughs> and you just struck another, another nerve right there. <coughs> Mr. Gable, uh, do you sing on horseback? No, sir, I don't. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, well, I didn't hear the answer, please. The answer was no, sir, he didn't. He does not sing yeah. on horseback. Oh. Uh, have you appeared in pictures where you were not in any proximity to a horse, but did a straight dramatic role? Oh, many times. Uh, sometimes with very pretty girls kissing all the time. <laughs> lots of fun. Lots, lots of fun. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Could you be possibly starring in a big picture that's about to open in New York? I think that's pretty sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid the answer is yes. Miss Francis? Oh, Bennett, do you know who it is? I have a sneaking hunch. Say it. Well, Want to have a conference? Uh, 
You can have five May seconds. May we have a conference? Five seconds for a conference. Oh, there's a picture coming in with Deborah Carr and Robert Mitchum. Oh, yes, oh, that's yes. right. That's not. Oh, yes, go ahead, say it. Well, it isn't Deborah Carr, so maybe it's Robert <laughs> Mitchum. <laughs> Robert Mitchum as well. And the picture is Heaven Knows Mr. Ellison. Heaven Knows Mr. Ellison, which uh, we made with uh, Johnny Houston down in, uh, on the island of Tobago. And it's just before Christmas. Actually, there are two things that, that got me out of California. One was, uh, and I've got to say this, because we had just completed a, forgive me, a Calypso album for Capitol Records. And they played one side of that thing so much that it just drove me out of town. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I was received here by 20th Century Fox for the picture, and uh, here I am. Well, it's nice to have you in New York. Thank and you actually, you much. also play with Miss Deborah Carr, who has visited with us, and we envy you, sir. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Nice to see you. minutes to test you again very quickly. Will our next challenger come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Rene... Rene Hart, is that right? <laughs> it's Miss Rene Hart, and you're from? New York. From New York. Will you come and join me? Miss France for a moment. So, so. <laughs> All right, Miss Hart, do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine, then let's, let's find out right now just exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we'll give you one bit of help. Miss Hart is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with Bennett, sir. Why, this is a pleasant segment of what's my line. <laughs> Miss Hart, uh, do you perform services of some kind? Yes, I do. Uh, do your extraordinarily good looks play some part in the services that you perform? No. No. Oh, no. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Press. This panel is gallant, John. You know <laughs> Do people come to you for your services, Miss Hart? Yes. Do you work in an enclosure of some kind? Yes. Uh, do you uh, touch the people in any way? Sometime. No, this could mislead the panel. It's not necessary. Therefore, we'll give you a no. That's two down and oh, eight to I go, thought. Mr. Gable. <laughs> Are your services equally useful for men and women? Yes. Uh, is there a preponderance, however, of one sex that... Uh, no. 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 That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could they ever come together and avail themselves of your services? Yes. Do you, by any chance, work for a non-profit-making organization? No. no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Hart, do you demonstrate or teach anything? Uh, no. no. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Have we found out whether there's a product at all? The nope. question has not been asked. Well, is there a product in what you do, used? Well, technically, I think, Miss Harley, we would have to agree that there is a, to some degree, you know, some area of our usual area mm -hmm. of, of question and understanding, there is a product, but it's not necessary actually to, to um, find out what it is. It wouldn't help much. I we'll see. give you a qualified yes and no on that. But people have to come to you. You don't go to them. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes. You sometimes go to yes. them. Uh, do they feel better after having had your services? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Would my husband feel better? <laughs> sometimes. sometimes. Arlene, I'm afraid we've run out of time, and oh. I have to flip the cards, but you will begin to get on a line of questioning which might have taken you down the right road, because I've got a big surprise for you. Miss Hart is a stockbroker with Bash & Company downtown, uh -huh. and Martin could get helped a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much. week. This is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene. Good night, uh, John, and you come my place later, Martin. <laughs> yes, <David. laughs> I know my place. Good night, darling. Good night, Martin. Happy trip. Good night, Bennett. Thank you. Um, if my broker is watching, he'll understand why I'm changing my account tomorrow morning. <laughs> good night, John. Good night, Bennett. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line? Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. 
American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's other great television program, Gunsmoke, Saturday night on this same network.